Well, greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and welcome to a new week of Brian's Bible Break. As we unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them, and as we continue through our journey through the Psalms, we are in Psalm 118 and reading verses 22 and 23 from the uh, New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, we are so grateful for the opportunity to gather, to spend time in your presence, to hear your still small voice speaking to us. And so God, we come eager to pause and reflect on your word, eager to hear from you. So God, we pray that you would speak a word of encouragement and hope into our hearts and our lives this day. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So, Psalm 118, verses 22 and 23. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. It's not lost on me that this psalm uh, that we have arrived at today is a psalm that is traditionally um, used during Holy Week. In fact, yesterday or on Sunday, we used portions from, from this psalm as a liturgy as we opened our Palm Sunday worship service. And it, it is a psalm that, that is reflective of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the rock on which we stand. He is the chief cornerstone of the church, of the body of Christ. He is our head of the church, our king. And so the psalmist says, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And this speaks to the reality that Christ uh, endured in the final days of his ministry. He was the rock. He is the truth. And yet the people rejected him. The, the chief priests and Sadducees and Pharisees, the leaders of religious law, rejected Jesus and the truth that he was the promised Messiah, the one to come to redeem Israel and to save us. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. Jesus was rejected. He was betrayed. And he suffered for our sake on the cross at Calvary, paying our sin debt in full so that we could be saved. He is now the cornerstone. He is the, and the, the importance of the word cornerstone is not lost on us either. Because as, as a building is, is being erected, the cornerstone is the stone that is set in place upon which every other stone is laid. And so it is important, it is vital, that that cornerstone is... Um, is on a solid foundation, but that it is also correct in that it is perfectly level and its sides are perfectly plumb, forming right angles, 90 degree angles. And if that cornerstone is off, even, even a fraction of a degree the rest of the building will be off because everything is based on the cornerstone. Everything is founded on the cornerstone. And so that analogy is not lost on the church. It's not lost on our relationship with Jesus Christ because he is the truth, the way, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. And if he is off, if there is anything about Jesus 
that is off, even a fraction of a degree, then the rest of our relationship is off. It's out of sync. It's off kilter. Jesus is perfect. He is the absolute perfection of what God intended for, for us. And so that's why he is the model. He is the perfect example for us to follow. Now, we will never reach perfection this side of glory. That we know. Only Jesus was able to accomplish that. But the reality is, friends, that he is the reason why we follow him, the reason why we work towards being more and more like him, is because he is, he is the template. He is the perfect model for us to follow. He is the cornerstone of our faith, of the church, of our relationship with God. Everything, everything flows out of him and through him. And it's important for us to recognize the next verse. It says, this is the Lord's doing. And it is wonderful to see. In other words, this is all part of God's plan and purpose. God's plan all along was to draw us back to himself. When sin entered the garden and, and Satan, the serpent, deceived Adam and Eve, twisting God's word just enough to deceive them and to sin. Sin entered the garden and they were cast from the garden because God cannot tolerate sin in his presence. It is why it is said that sin is the chasm that separates humanity from God. And the only thing that can bridge that chasm is the cross of Jesus Christ. And so, this verse tells us that this is the Lord's doing. In other words, this is the Lord's plan to enable us to come back to Him. To be drawn back to Him. To enjoy fellowship with Him. To enjoy communion with him. To enjoy an intimate relationship with him. It's the only way. All other ways lead to destruction. But the way of Christ leads to an intimate relationship with God. Leads to life now and for all eternity. And as the psalmist says, it is wonderful to see. There is nothing more beautiful than seeing a, one more lost sinner saved by grace and accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. Beautiful sight that is to, to see, friends. It is the Lord's doing. It is the Lord's plan and it is wonderful to see and so friends this day give God thanks and praise for um, sorry just uh, my mom has terrible timing when it comes to calling me um, it's the Lord's doing he desires all people to come to him, to know him intimately, and to walk humbly with him, and to follow his son, to model their lives after him, because he is the cornerstone. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this glorious day. Lord God, we rejoice in the redemption won through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
We thank you, O God, that you sent him to be the model for us to follow. The model of grace, of compassion, of forgiveness. And so, God, we pray that you will guide us this day. We pray, O God, that you will give us the words to speak, words of life, words of encouragement and hope. We pray, O God, that you will grant us wisdom and courage. And that in all ways, we will give you thanks and praise, glorifying your holy name for all the ways and means by which you bless us, you encourage us, and you strengthen us for our journey with you. Father God, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, let's uh, thank you for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures, from Psalm 119, the longest psalm in the book of Psalms. Uh, and uh, so we will reflect on a verse or two from that, uh, from that psalm tomorrow. So friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow, friends.